Hi, I'm Jacqueline Peng and you're watching the HTV Evening Highlights. Exporters have been advised to convert their foreign currency earnings to ringgit. By doing that, the Association of Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industries in Malaysia, or ACCCIM, says exporters could help stabilize the ringgit slide. I, I think uh, by encouraging exporters to convert their uh, foreign exchange earnings uh, into ringgit much faster, that would be a, a, a major step to help to stabilize the ringgit, I think. ACCIM says exporters who have retained their US dollars proceeds could help cushion the impact of the weaker ringgit. Weaker ringgit definitely uh, will have a significant impact on ACCIM members' uh, uh, business performance because uh, most of us are actually targeting the locals. But uh, if you look at our survey, you know, about 10% of them are actually uh, uh, doing the export business and you can sense that those actually uh, that are doing business are not reporting um, uh, the scenario as, as worse as uh, what those who are actually targeting the domestic side. So I, I think the export sector you know, uh, could still help to cushion some of the impact to avoid Malaysia from falling into a, a recession. According to the 2014-2015 economic report, the country's exports last year rose 6% to about 766 billion ringgit. Meanwhile, ACCIM President Dato Ter Leong Yap says the organization has formed a special task force to help tackle economic issues in Malaysia. And the task force has suggested several measures to the Prime Minister's office to address the sliding ringgit. Year to date, the ringgit has weakened 23% against the US dollar to 4 ringgit 31 cent today. Newly listed Amulus Holdings is not worried about the slowdown of the global semiconductor industry. And that's because the automated test equipment maker believes that the slowdown is just a short-term concern. Five, four, three, two, one. The company, which made a solid debut on Bursa's ACE market today, says the slowdown should not affect it moving forward. Personally, I'm worried. Okay. Personally, I'm worried, uh, but I'm worried about semiconductor. But when you look at the the products, and when you look at uh, different, you know, the when you talk to customers, when you talk to uh, suppliers and stuff like that, you get a feel of what is going on, right? And uh, the feeling is that uh, this is maybe short term, and it, it doesn't it doesn't give you you know it doesn't sort of uh, worry the business you know the company as a whole. Semiconductor sales are historically highly correlated to global economic growth, so it's no surprise that this particular sector is seeing a drop in revenue. The stock opened at 36 sen, a 28.5% premium from its offer price of 29 sen. It ended the day up 41% to 39.5 sen. Tanjong Offshore Services Sandrian Berhad, or TOS, has inked a collaboration agreement with Yantai Jure Petroleum Equipment and Technologies. Yantai Jure is a subsidiary of Jure Group, China's largest privately held oil and gas company. The three-year agreement will see both companies working closely in relation to oil and gas products and related opportunities in Malaysia for Petronas. TOS, which is a subsidiary of Tanjong Offshore Berhad, will market Jure services in Malaysia, while Jure will provide oil field equipment for projects awarded by Petronas. TOS CEO Mohamed Sabri Ghani says the partnership will improve the company's operating efficiency, lower costs and implement continuous technology enhancement. Jure is an international integrated oil and gas company listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange with a market capitalization of 5.8 billion US dollar. Still in oil and gas, Sapura Kanchana Petroleum's net profit plunged to 104 million ringgit in the second quarter of FY16 amid falling oil prices. That's a massive 77% drop from 445 million ringgit since a year earlier. The decline is mainly due to its oil and gas impairment provision of 540 million ringgit. The integrated upstream oil and gas services and solution provider has made the provision for impairment given the volatility of oil and gas industry. Sapura Kanchana's revenue for the quarter was up 2.8 billion ringgit from 2.7 billion ringgit. Despite the industry downturn, the company has an order book of 23 billion ringgit.
Group CEO Tansri Sharil Samsudin says the company's robust order book provides its certainty in revenue over the next few years, with almost 6 billion ringgit secured for FY17. And that brings DHTV Evening Highlights to a close. I'm Jacqueline Peng. Thank you for watching.